the four lessons on Splunk. And I just want to remind you, in case some people think they have to do all the Splunk challenges, and you don't, you only have to do 80 points worth of them. There's a whole bunch more. You can do more, and that's good, and that's worth extra credit. But I only expected you to do 20 points per week as the required homework. Otherwise, it would be really a lot. So we've done the first three sections already. And the level four is down here. So you want to find what's the IP address of the machine with this name, we 8105 desk on this date. Now, um, we can start by searching for that. And we'll find 181,000 events. So if we search for that, now here, I find nothing. What's wrong? Time. The time. The time is wrong. I got to look years ago, not in the last 24 hours. Since I know there's going to be a lot of them, I'm going to do sampling, one in a thousand, and now search for all time. And now I find 280 events. Okay. And what I expected to find was 181,000, 181, so that's reasonable. Now, let's look at the source field. Um, all right. Here's a few sources. Now, I don't have very many of them here. Let's see what I need. I want to find stream sources with protocols used in Active Directory logins. So let's get more of them. Instead of sampling so sparsely, let's go down to like 1 in 100. Now I get about 2,000 events. And the sources here, I got stream SMB and DNS. But I still didn't have what I want, so I'm going to nuke all the sampling. OK, we'll just have a lot of events so I get all the sources and it'll be slow. It's got to count up to 181,000. So I'll have to wait a minute. And I know there will be 10 different sources. So see, it's only found five of them so far. What's the difference between a source type and an index? Oh, an index is just a label that you apply to the data. So it typically would be like a company location or something. Uh, the source type is the type of data, like whether it came from a firewall or a web server. So um, they're quite different. And the index is something you manually configure when you set up your Splunk. Um, this data goes in this index, and the source type is automatically put in by Splunk when it parses the data to find the fields. It decides what source type each log entry is each event is, and then it parses out fields. So 181,000 there. Now I, I see 10 sources. Um, like source, there are 10 values. OK, let's look at the source. OK, and the point here is I'm trying to find what the IP address is of a machine by the machine name. And if you know how Windows Active Directory logins work, that goes by LDAP. Lightweight Directory Access Protocol is what's used to send that kind of information to a domain controller and get it back. This is what we want, the LDAP events. And you see there's only 74 of them. So if we get the LDAP events, um, then we're going to get events on that day and look at their IP address. So we're looking for 24 August 2016. I could restrict it, but in fact, this looks like it's right here, 24. So look at the events on that day. And then look at their IP addresses. OK, so I guess I do want to restrict it to that day. So let's go here, 24 August 2016. Um, uh, date range. I think a date and time range is what I find easiest. So 24 August 2016. So that's 08, 24, 20, 2016. 24, 2016, OK, copy that and put it here. And I want to go to the 25. And I want to go from, I think, 0 and 0. I think this is going to get me that whole day. Let's see if that works. Uh, apply. Now I have 48 events, OK. And uh, see, here's this kind of information going off. Here's the V8505 desk. They're all going to have that. And so if I look at the IP addresses, destination IP is here. And that is probably it. There's only one destination IP. Is there a source IP? This is 192.168. And the source IT is 250.100. So one of these is going to be the domain controller. And the other is going to be the laptop. And um, all right. 
And so I'm not, now to tell which one is which, I think you'd have to understand more, but I think it is the higher number. I think 20 is the domain controller, which is the normal convention, and the laptop itself is the address ending in 100. That's the usual convention. Uh, to be sure of that, you'd have to actually understand which way these messages are going and look up and research the, uh, the um, parameters of the Active Directory login but I think it's enough for what we're doing here to just uh, accept that it's probably this one. So I'm going to save that. Um, this is IP of v 815 desk. All right, so I think we're going to need that as we go ahead. So I've got that IP address ending in 100. Now, I'm going to look in Suricata, and I want to find the server malware. So if you search for server, you'll find, you can do the same thing. That'll get you somewhere. And then you look at source and find the Suricata. So we start with server. All right. Oh, I better get rid of this time and make it um, all time. All right. OK, and now I want the Suricata events. So that's, again, the source. And you see, here's the Suricata events. And there's only five of them. All the rest of these are other things. So there's only five Suricata events, and the question was, which one alerted the fewest number of times by signature ID? So you'll find a signature ID here, alert signature ID. And there you go. These ones were twice, and that one was only one. So that's the signature ID that uh, alerted the smallest number of times. Now you want to find the fully qualified domain name. This is to show you the ransom note. After it encrypts your files, it goes to like an onion domain and pops up a ransom note. So you want to find this. So um, here's my latest process that I found better. Find Suricata alerts about onion domain lookup. So um, we're already looking at Suricata here. OK. And so let's just look at all the Suricata events. And we, the onion domain lookup is going to be one type of event. It'll be some of this stuff here. Um, event type. Uh, right. Um, I want to find Suricata alerts. I think maybe I'm not finding Suricata alerts here. Let me just do this. I'm going to go and get, um, let me turn up my sampling again and just get everything. Okay. I think there might be two kinds of Suricata data. Okay, now I've got, let's take a look at source type. Here's yeah, Suricata, and then there was that other XML Suricata data. Um, See, I want Suricata alerts, and I think this might be where I'll find them. Let's see. Um, event type. Yeah, here's Suricata alerts. Now, I believe I was looking for alerts. Yep, find Suricata alerts about onion domain. Okay, that's what I thought. So now I've found the alerts, which are different than whatever that other Suricata stuff was. And now I just need to turn off my sampling, and I found a lot of alerts. And now I should be able to find alert category. There we go. Um, there are 14 categories, and I'm not seeing them all here. Let's look at the rare values. And here, um, network trojan. Nope, I'm not seeing onion domain lookup. All right. Um, Got to get out of this somehow. I get rid of this thing. We'll do it. All right. There is an onion domain lookup someplace in here. Alert category. Alert signature. Oh, I might be one of these. Um, I wonder what happened if it's just going to contain the word onion. That would be nice. Ah. 
Now let's look for the word onion. Hmm, not appearing on a screen. Alert category. Um, all right. Let me try my, I left myself some notes to guide me. I'm not able to follow my own instructions again here. Um, let's see if I can figure out anything from my notes. Um, okay, ah, yeah, I, here's where I did it with the time. Okay, Suricata events. Okay, let's try it the other way. My new procedure that I thought was so smart, I can't understand how to do it anymore. So my old process is to find those five Suricata alerts about server. We had that. So we did server, and then I'd restrict the time to a very narrow time range. That's how I did it before. Somehow I had a smarter way to do it a year ago, but I cannot remember how to do it anymore. All right, server. And then we want to find the uh, source that was Suricata, which was this stuff, Suricata JSON. And that gives us these five events. Okay, uh, those five events view them as raw text in time order, find a time delay, and a look up after it. Okay, so um, let's go to raw, and then sort them in time order, which they might be. It's usually the most recent thing first. This is 11.15, 12 point, this is exactly the same time. This is 10.49, and this is 10.49. Okay, so we have a, um, Network Trojan was detected, then an ICMP response check-in, then we have onion domain lookup. So this is the time it took to encrypt your files. Here you got infected, and at, at this time, 1049, and then 25 minutes later, it was done encrypting files, and now it was looking up the, um, the ransom note. That's what this, here's the onion domain lookup we were looking for. It's a lot easier to find than I thought. All right, so now, um, Narrow the time range to just a few seconds before the alert for the onion domain lookup. And there may be a problem with time zones. This is what got me before. And now look for Suricata events with DNS related fields. So I want to find this time, which is 2016 824 11 15 12. So let me just copy that and save it in a uh, text document so I can remember it. Okay, now I want a few seconds before that time. So I have to figure out how to do it up here, which is pretty difficult. Date and time range, okay. So it is uh, 2016, 824. Okay. eight twenty four, twenty sixteen. 2016, okay. All right, and I want between. All right, and now I want to go 11.15, uh, 11.15.12. And I think when we're in California, this will be reasonably easy. When I went to Central Time, it was all off by an hour or two. So this would be the 12 seconds before the Onion Domain lookup. So I apply that, and now, there's none of these with server and those things, so I have to just look for everything in that range. Okay, there are 398 events. Now I look at the source. And there's Sysmon, here's UDP, here's Suricata. There are four Suricata events in that range, I guess. Those are going to be the same ones I've already seen, though, I think, but let's take you a look. Look for alert, right? Look for what? You look for alert, right? Alert. Well, no, I don't think I'm looking for alerts. See, I'm looking for um, DNS lookups is what I'm looking for. So check to make sure you can still find the Suricata alerts. Yeah, that's the point. If I can see those alerts, that means I have the right time zone. And so let's take a look at them. These should be the four alerts I already saw. Um, yeah, I think this probably means my time is wrong. In fact, I can tell here, yeah, this is 12.15. And I wanted 11.15, there's a time zone problem, so I need to move back by an hour. Good, that's the problem. 
this is actually what we're talking about in lecture. When you have time zone problems, it can drive you nuts. So I really need this to be, I think this is local time. And I think wherever this was, this data came from was an hour difference. Let's try 10 and apply this. And now I have 12 events. And um, see if I can spot those suricata alerts among them. Uh, now I'm seeing the right time, 11.15 here, so that's good. Um, I should be able to tell what's going on here. Uh, event type, flow and stats, uh, suricata. Well, here's DNS. I might find the answer I'm looking for there. I sort of wanted to still find those alerts. And I'm a little troubled that I'm not seeing them. Uh, but I think I'm in the right area because I can see the timestamp is right. So let's just take a look at the DNS. Um, if I go to event type DNS, now I should be able to have uh, the thing it looked up, which is the um, RR name? No. R type transaction ID. Um, Query, destination port, destination. Why am I not seeing the actual domain, NX domain? Resource name, demo one, root, cod A, query. And I'm still not seeing it. All right, let me go back to my instructions again. We're close. Um, search all events, examine all story cod events, look at all the DNS related fields. Okay, let me see if my notes. Ah, the source is the JSON. And um, the signature, okay, I need to find the signature, and that would be domain lookup. So here I've got, let's get rid of this type.dns. And now let's look for a signature field. That's what I was looking for before, and I couldn't find it. Uh, I'm not finding it. Source. Server, source. There should be 50, okay. Bots V1, 1015, 00 to 13. Why well, is it pretty awful? Um, onion domain lookup. All right, let me just try this. This one here is the thing that finds the events. I think I still may have a time zone problem. Let's try this. This one here, so that's the one that finds the onion domain lookup. Ah, I still have a problem at the time zone. And see, it's showing 10.15 instead of 11.15. Somehow, my time is still wrong. This is why I hate doing it this way. So 11 was apparently right. I don't know what went wrong before when I did 11. Let's apply that. I still have zero. All right. Um, the time of interest... 824.6, no, if we do all time, I'll have a bunch of extra junk. 824.16, 10.15, wait, wait, 11.15, um, 12, 10.15 and 10.15, 13. Okay, before I went to 13, I, mean, I know why, it was 12.6 seconds. I'm cutting it off too early, I think. All right, I've got to go to 13. Nope, I still have nothing. Well, I might just give up on this one. It's driving me nuts. Um, I wanted 1015. Uh, maybe it's 10. I was, okay, I think it was 10. It's 10, but I was cutting off or too soon. I was cutting off half a second too soon, which is why this one is so annoying. There. Now I have the two events I know about, the onion domain lookups. Now I'm finally in the right time range. And now I'll find all suricata events in that time range. So I get rid of this signature requirement. Now I'm going to have all the suricata events, and there should be 50 of them. Uh, oh, get rid of this server. Okay, there. 
There's the 50 events. Now I'm finally getting somewhere. And now there should be a DNS RR name. There we are. And now you can see these are innocent, and that's the malicious one with this garbage server or something. There, finally. <laughs> okay. Okay. That might be the hardest one in the whole thing. I remember helping a lot of students at various classes struggle with that timing. That's why, for some reason, I thought there was an easier way to do it. But, uh, you know, now that I know how to do it, let's try doing it this other way. Find Shurikata events about onion domain lookup. The point is, this made it easy to dodge that time zone problem. So that's the hard way. Now we're going to try it the early way. We're going to look for onion domain lookup. I think that's all we need. I think I'm remembering how to do it easy. If I do that, there's the two events. Now, I'm, the point is here, I'm not going to use the date time range. I'm going to just go back to all time. Okay, I still find those two events. Now, the point is, those, I can just stay within one second of those events and look in the stream DNS events. So, and this is much easier. You can go down here and look at this and say list, and you can click this time. And now you can just say, I want to be within one second of that time. And now you don't have to worry about the time zone and all that. This is clearly the right time zone. Now I apply that, and now I um, look at the stream DNS events. So now I get rid of the onion domain lookup and look at all the events in this one second or two second period. And there's 4,000 of them. And now I can look for DNS stream. And there's only 16 of them. And in them, I think it's the same thing, DNS RR. Um, there's somewhere in here is the domain. Look in the stream in the query field. OK. There. That is easier <laughs> now they're doing it. OK. That way you don't have to worry about the time zone. You work from relative time of a, to the event you care about. All right, so there's two ways to do it, and I think the other stuff is a lot easier. So what was the first suspicious domain visited on 24 August 2016? So we find Suricata events, and we look at Suricata events coming from the targeted um, uh, um, IP address. So um, we keep uh, this part here, um, source shurikata.json. All right. And it's still going to like a one second time range, and I want everything on that day, 24 August 2016 again. So that is here, 824 2016. I want to go from, say, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, to say uh, same thing on the next day. That should do it. All right. And I am expecting 86,000 of them. Then look at source IP. There are 86,000 of them. OK, we're on track. Source IP is here. And I want the one ending in 100, which I think is the one right at the top. 192, 168, 250, 100. That's it. So these are the ones coming from the endpoint we're interested in. The Suricata events coming from the endpoint. OK. And now examine the event type field and look for the ones that load web pages. OK. Event type. OK, and we want HTTP then. Now we're down to 38 events on that day. And now just look at them. There are only 10 of them. And you can find out which one is the source of the infection. So um, examine the host names. All right. HTTP. Host name. There we are. There are 10 of them. Microsoft, Windows, Bing, Acronis. This is the one, solidarityproximity.org. That's the goofy one. That one's actually malicious, and you can tell by just Googling it.
yep, and here you go. That's known to do um, ransomware. That, that's one of the domains that loads this thing. So that is the malicious domain that got him infected, and that was the issue. So on this day, this desktop visited that domain and uh, got infected. All right, now, um, at least that, that was part of the infection. It wasn't actually the origin of it, as we're going to see. So now, a VB script was run, which is kind of fun. If we look for an event with a VB script and EXE, there are 16 of them. We were infected by Visual Basic, so that is .VBS and .EXE. And I got to go back to all time. All right, there are 16 events with .VBS and .EXE. Good. Look at the body field and find the malicious one. Here's the body field, and this is uh, all this garbage. A new process has been created. A new process has been created. And one of these is, is obvious, there it is, obviously malicious. You can see this is obfuscated code with these ridiculous names like GNIBPQ. That's what bad guys do. They use confusing variable names and stuff. That's the malicious one. And so what was the question here, VB script? Um, the entire script, what is the name of the first function to find? Well, you read the code, you can find the first function. It's going to be uh, just gibberish. But it starts up here, um, command line cmd.exe. Here's where it starts, random.vbs name. And here it is for, so here it is declaring the function, this crazy thing. So that's the function name. All right, then we want to know the field length. Um, the entire script can be found in a field in Splunk, prepended by the name of the launching exe. So um, that's a field in this event, and I don't think I'll bother going through it, but there's a, if you look at just that one event, oh, I can't do this. I can't use something that complicated to filter by. Um, we were looking at the, uh, what were we looking at? We're looking at the body field. Okay, now we found the malicious event down here someplace. Okay, there's the malicious event. I would like to see just that one event. Um, maybe I can... Hmm. One event here. I was hoping I could select it by time, but somehow I am not um, seeing a time field anywhere. Let's see if I can view this. Can different. I'm looking at body. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at body. Let's make a table. That might be the way to do it. A table with time and body. That might make it easier to find the one I want. Yeah. There's time and body. Okay. There we are. This is it. And so this is called process command line. That's the field we want. And there's a way to get the length of a field. I think there's a tip here to do that. So you want the process command line of this one event. I should be able to get this one event by just restricting the time to here, um, narrow to this time range. And now I got four events. I'm still not getting down to the one event I want. Um, all right, let's try this. Uh, how about random? Maybe it's the only one that contains the word random. Nope. Okay, there must be something unique about this event. How about ATCQ? <laughs> well, I'm not having much luck getting down to just this one event, but I don't think it really matters. Um, I, I can just leave it here where I see all four of them. And I can make a table of time, body, and then I think it, the other thing I want is process name. Was that it? Process command line. Um, uh, process command line. I'm sort of confused about the uh, spaces. Let's see if this works. Nope. 
Well, there is something called process command line, uh, but it's in the body. Okay, I see what's going on. Okay, I have to go back to here and I have to find out what field it is that has that process command line. It appears in the body with that name, but it will appear, it's probably here, command line. Uh, yes, this is, I think, the command line. Yep, that's it. Okay, so command line is what I want. So I can make a table of time and command line. All right, and here's the thing I want. And now I can just add the length of the command line, which you can get from, there's a tip how to do it here. I think it's just len of, something simple like that. Oh, for crying out loud. All right. Uh, Splunk, find length of a field. I think it's just length of, how to find, length of string. Yep, um, length of a string. Eval, yeah. The child of the number of characters are assigned to the length. It's one of these things here. Eval length. Um, XML, length function, okay, uh, eval, L equals len, okay, so try that, pipe eval, L equals len, okay, let's see if we can do this, then I should be able to here, pipe, okay, eval, L is len of command line, there we go, and now I can add, say, L here, that might work, See if it works. Yes, it does. Okay, that's where you get the link. And so that's going to be the answer. Anyway, that's what they wanted you to do is to learn how to do that. And uh, all right. And my uh, tips to web pages for hints always seem to go stale really fast. Let me save this link. This is the tip I'd like to leave there. I'm going to put it someplace. Okay, for link. I'll have to update the instructions again. Every time I do it, by the time the students do it, that link is dead or something. Anyway, all right. So, there we go. All right. Then there is a USB key, so we can look at um, enum USB key. Um, right, so regi your registry settings for USB key, registry settings will look like this. So we want to find registry events, and they will have a thing called friendly name. That's what you find for USB keys. So um, I might be able to just look for friendly name. That would really be a cheap way to do it. And I probably have to fix the time range. Nope, okay, I'm going to need to find registry events then. Um, win registry would seem like the thing. And uh, here I've got USB device registry entries. So, um, Find device information after it enumerates. And uh, device name is there. Enum USB, that's what, that's what I say, enum USB is something to look for. Okay, that's what I put in the hint and I didn't understand my hint. So enum USB is part of the name. So if I put that here. Wait, I've still got some goofy time. No, hmm, all right. Uh, maybe need quotes around the slash. Maybe need to get rid of the slash. How about just USB? Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, good. Now only 303 events are registry events for, have to do with the USB. Uh, here we go. You know, USB, and here we get this is the kind of information you get about USBs, these code numbers and stuff. And someplace there is, I believe, 
a name, and I thought it was friendly name, but let's take a look here again. Um, there's still not a very readable name. Somewhere in one of these messes is the actual service, WinUSB. Supermutt, friendly name. It is friendly name, but there's no space. Okay, friendly name is the name that you're used to seeing, the name you'd see. So let's try friendly name. All right, no such luck. I think it's inside here. Let's try searching for friendly. Nope, all right. See if I can understand my hints anymore. I'm not having any luck. Find the most readable name as shown here. Look at the enum USB subkey. I've got 300 events. Enum USB and um, registry path, registry type, registry value type. No, none of this stuff seems useful. Object path. Oh, that's not as useful as it should be. Registry key name. Hmm. All right, let me check my other tips. Um, yeah, friendly name. All right. <laughs> It's supposed to be as simple as looking for a friendly name. I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. Friendly name. There. I don't know why that didn't work the last three times I tried to do it, but I must have had something else up there instead. Now you should just be able to find it here. Um, show... There. This is what we were looking for, Miranda Pry. It has to do with the story about Batman. This is the name of the thing. Miranda Pry was the name of the registry key. It came from Miranda Tate, who is the bad guy, that tricked this guy into inserting the USB key, which started the ransomware attack. All right. And so there's more here. I think maybe that's enough for one night. Um, I think I'll just leave these for the students to do, because it's uh, getting pretty clumsy. But anyway, you can, you can see some fun here. You can see registry, you can see USB keys going in. You can find the VB script and so on. You can really follow all the steps. So let me see if I can somehow dig through all my windows and see if there's questions in the chat. Uh, in Twitch, I've been forgetting about that. A source type in an index, like event sampling. Uh, event sampling uh, just lets you see uh, like one every, every 10 events or one every 100 events just to make the query faster. I need to expand the fields and then control F. Yeah, I tried that. Where's my class today? I don't understand that question. They're all in Science 200. Um, yeah, somebody answered that. Good. Yeah, search friendly name works. Yeah, yeah. Whatever I did before, I followed up trying to search friendly name. Okay, anyway, I think that's enough. I'm, get, I'm falling off the thread here enough that uh, I think these demos are not that useful. So I'm going to stop this one.